on the drop step by Tyron Lindsay. And welcome those of you along the ACC network to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We're at the Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum on this Veterans Day with Corey Alexander. I'm Doug Sherman. Glad you can be with us here for the first minute and a half with the Demon Deacons with a one-point early lead on the three-point play by Andrew Carr. This is a rare test, at least this season, in the first week of the regular season between a couple of power conference schools. It absolutely is one of the first power conference matchups that we've seen this early season so far. And again, a good one with first-year coach Mike White, well, first year at Georgia, coming on the road and taking on a Wake Forest team that had a great year last year. Steve Forbes looking to continue to build on the culture here in Winston-Salem. That was Terry O'Quindo for the bucket. And the foul committed by Terry Roberts while shooting the three ball. It'll send Tyree Appleby to the line. There's the first year head coach of the Bulldogs, Mike White, former Ole Miss guard, graduated in 99. And uh, he had a good run at Florida, but he decided to leave Gainesville, go to Athens, and start new in the SEC. And go to the rival. So it's going to be interesting for Mike White this year, especially when he has to go down to the O Dome. Yeah. to take on the Florida Gators. But, you know, Mike White is happy with his decision to make the move to Georgia. Georgia, he's got a great group right now. He loves the team that he's coaching. And it feels like it's important for them to win this season, not just waiting and building it for the future, but important for them to win this season. My big question is, what does he and his family do with all of that orange and blue gear with the Gator on it? Well, I won't say burn it. I will say that there are many people that can use those, those clothes in the city of Gainesville, Florida. So I'm sure there are many places they can donate. Wide open look of window, rattles out. Anselm got a hand on it, but here comes Tyree Appleby. Former Cleveland State star gets denied on the drive by Mardrez McBride. We talked with Tyree Appleby pregame, who played the last two seasons under Mike White at Florida, we asked him, who has the advantage? Him having coached you or you having played for him? He looked at us with a wry smile and simply said, I got the advantage. I know Mike White. I know him inside and out. Yeah, I like the way Tyree Appleby carries himself. Young man from Jacksonville, Arkansas, who's a grad transfer. Pass inside off of the fingertips of Davion Bradford. Give it back to the Bulldogs. Well, Mike White has himself nine transfers, including seven first-year transfers on his roster, a couple of freshmen as well. So it's an almost completely reworked lineup in Athens this year. It really is, but he did mention that there was not a lot of success at Georgia last season, so they have a lot of work to do. Nice-looking move inside by Braylon Bridges. Right now, Wake Forest going to guard Bridges man to man but when you see guys get looks like that early you got to think about how we're going to double team if they kick if they get going georgia playing without matthew alexander moncrief tonight because of the ankle injury he sustained in the win monday over western carolina a lot of contact the whistle comes on the shot with three on the timer. A smart play by Davian Williamson attacking the basket. Even though the shot clock is going down, you don't have to settle for the jumper. There is the native of Lone Tree, Iowa, 57-year-old Steve Forbes in his third season as head coach of the Demon Deacons, last year's ACC Coach of the Year. Great conversation with him earlier today. We probably talked with Coach Forbes for the first 30 minutes of their shoot-around. He just kind of hung out with us. Mm -hmm. He eventually said, well, let me go be a head coach and walked away. But... Great conversation with them, talking about the state of college basketball, the program here in Winston-Salem and Wake Forest, and everything that they have going on. And Coach Forbes is excited about this opportunity and excited about this team, knowing that the success they had last year and trying to use that to build this program to where he wants to see it go. And yeah, they went 25-10 and 10 a year ago and were disappointed not to get into the NCAA tournament, but they didn't mope their way into the NIT. They made it all the way to the NIT quarterfinals. And that's what you have to do when you're building a program. And, Advantage, taking advantage of opportunities like that when you get into the NIT. 
Another nice bucket by Braylon Bridges. And Braylon Bridges is showing that he can be a force in the post. And right now, Mike White continuing to feed him down there. Wake Forest may not be able to guard him one-on-one -on -one throughout this game. Well, Bridges started all 32 games a year ago, the only Bulldog to do so under Tom Green. But with a new coach come changes in starting assignments and rotation assignments. And so I wonder, with Oquindo, who, like I said, averaged over 18 points per game during conference play last year, and Braylon Bridges, who's coming off the bench. But <laughs> what I love was Mike White running over to pick up Tyree Appleby, who runs into the scoring table. Those two guys, of course, we talked about their history. And Appleby, not only he played for Mike White, but his brother played for Mike White at Louisiana Tech back in the day. Yeah, Tyree's older brother Raheem played at Louisiana Tech for Mike White and was first team all-conference USA. 1,700 career points, so a lot of history between the Applebee's and Mike White. I was going to say, so now Quindo, he's got to take a new role. Bridges has to take a new role, and I would think for a coach in the position of Mike White, that's not necessarily an easy thing to do to reprogram these guys. No, it's absolutely not, especially for guys who've had success. And when you talk about a window who's had success, he's a preseason All-SEC performer. And you talk about a guy like that that does step into a new role and a new system where he's had success before, oftentimes that could be difficult. But Mike White talked about how his guys have been very receptive. They stepped up and, at, and he was very honest with them in re-recruiting many of them to stay in this program. He wasn't sure Cario was going to stay. He went into the portal, re-recruited him. And since that time, Coach White tells us that he has honest, challenging conversations every day trying to build the role that Oquindo needs to play for this team to win more basketball games this year. Yeah, and that's the only thing you can ask from the coach. Uh oh Ooh, the spin! And a chance for three for Williamson. Speaking of having history with coaches, Davian Williamson played for Steve Forbes at East Tennessee State, and he loved him so much he brought him to Wake, and it's been beneficial as you see the beautiful move with the finish. Oh, friends, getting acquainted here at the Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum is <laughs> Tyree Appleby <laughs> goes to the ground, but who is it? His former coach, Mike White, coming to his rescue to help him up off the floor. The smile from Tyree, who says that he knows Mike White better than anyone. Great to see these guys still having a great relationship, even though they're on both sides of the team. And you know, for as accomplished as Tyree Appleby has been at Cleveland State and then at Florida under Coach White here at Wake Forest, and as we mentioned, his older brother Raheem was a 1,700-point scorer at Louisiana Tech. They got nothing on their big sister. Shakila is a Grambling State legend. 2,000 points, Ooh. 900 rebounds, 600 assists, 480 steals, two quadruple doubles. So, so you know what she tells them on Thanksgiving? Yeah, what you guys doing, that's cute. <laughs> she just calls that cute. <laughs> when you got 2K? Come on, man. Along with 900 rebounds, 600 assists, almost 500 steals? Come on. Tyree, your little 1550, that's cute. 10 <laughs> 8, Wake Forest with the early lead with Corey Alexander on Doug Sherman. Georgia turns it over with the steal, Damari Monsanto. Wake beat Fairfield on Monday in its opener, 71-59. And a trio of players score 14. That is the fourth turnover already tonight for Wake Forest. And that's trying to hit a home run in comparison to taking the singles. If you swing that to the opposite side, Davian Williamson has a good look at a three, but trying to pinpoint it ends up in a turnover. In and out for Jabri Abdur Rahim, the former Virginia Cavalier. That's my guy, my young fella right now, looking very confident. In his Georgia uniform, Mike White talked about him. If he defends, he'll be one of the best players on the floor. He can score with the best of them. I was surprised Jabri seemed genuinely happy to see it today. What do you mean, surprise? <laughs> Here comes Justin Hill with the basketball. Holt gives it back, Hill. A little strong on the three. Rebound, fuck four out of bounds off of the Bulldogs. 
Abdul Rahim the last to touch. But that's another one of Jabri's strengths. Offensive rebound. He had two offensive rebounds last time out. And as a scorer, he knows has a knack to getting to the basketball. And oftentimes coming up with those and getting extra opportunities. Of course, you want to get extra opportunities for yourself. So that's one of the reasons why he's a great offensive rebounder. He loves to score points. Wait for the two-point lead. And the basketball as the Bulldogs have gone cold. Nearly three minutes since their last point. Wink just keeps coming. Davian Williamson from the corner. Now you see why that was such a bad play earlier to not swing it to Davian Williamson on the other side when he's over for a three on the wing. Get the basketball into this young man's hands. He knows what to do with it. One of the biggest mistakes is helping on ball side. You see too far away from Davian Williamson. He has a quick trigger. You got to be there on the catch, not giving him that easy look. Even though it's not that easy, it's easy for Davian. <laughs> I'm not sure if you make that shot, Mr. Franklin. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. I easily. Don't think. Oh, easy? Easily. No side of the backboard actually. Are you one? kidding me? <laughs> I got to show you some pictures of me at Boston Garden. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen it. You keep your picture. <laughs> <laughs> Foul going to be called on Oquindo, getting back to try and stop Cameron Hildreth on the run out. Wake Forest coming up with the turnovers, getting out in transition. Nice ball movement once again, and Hildreth, a shooter, getting opportunity to get to the free throw line, put points on the board early. 14 points for him coming off the bench in the opener versus Fairfield. And, you know, he's one of those young men that you can see having a big impact for Coach Steve Forbes in the rotation this season. Well, I always love to find out the origin stories in recruitment. And uh, we asked Coach Forbes about Cameron Hildreth. And apparently Cameron's father, Daniel, played pro ball in England for Steve Forbes' good friend, now the head coach of the Toronto Raptors, Nick Nurse. And that is what consummated that friendship. Yeah. I mean, again, you got guys like Nick Nurse that you're talking to on a regular basis. That's a pretty good uh, coaching circle to be a part of. A couple of Iowa guys who came up together. Another Georgia turnover turns into more points for Williamson. I'll tell you what, the Bulldogs turned it over 21 times on Monday and got lucky to win that game against Western Carolina. If they keep turning it over like this, they're not going to win. And David Williamson also scored 14 against Fairfield, but didn't have a very good shooting day. Now he's off to a much better start offensively in this one. And right now, you can see this game means a lot to Wake Forest. When you think about it, now mind you, you're playing against an SEC opponent. Last season, Wake Forest didn't play the toughest of non-conference schedules, but they got off to a great start, I believe at 11-1. And, and so this year, Steve Forbes has challenged his team by creating a much greater schedule. But I believe that his players understand that. And these are guys who didn't get into the NCAA tournament. When you think about a guy like David Williams, he didn't get to the NCAA tournament a year ago. And he wants that opportunity. He knows that these are games they have to win to get to that point. Yeah. Coach Forbes told us, you know, when they scheduled this game, he thought he'd have Jake LaRavia back. Now, he didn't anticipate that he would turn into a first-round draft pick. He knew Alondis Williams, the ACC Player of the Year, was going to be gone. But as you know, Corey, when coaches are building their schedule for the next year, they don't want to over-schedule based on their own roster. And those schedules are normally done in the spring of the following year. And so at that point, Jake LaRavia was still in the NBA draft process and could have easily come back to school. But I like the fact that Coach Forbes is taking on this type of challenge early. Step back by Monsanto's no good. That's where Wake Forest is different. You see Monsanto's coming up with the steal. Finally to his feet. Cario Oquindo after having committed the fifth Georgia turnover in the last five minutes. I tell you what, Monsantos is a great guy, though. You see he does a great job here coming up with the strip. But the issue is, as his Georgia opponent is on the floor, Monsanto stays in the backcourt with him. Better than me, Dougie Fresh. That's a five on four. I might get a look out of that one. I got to run down. I'll check on him on the way back there. Davian Williamson, the game's leading scorer, sits down with 10 points. But you see right now, 
Georgia, the five turnovers already. That was a problem for them in their Monday win against Western Carolina at 21 turnovers. But Western Carolina only turned those into 16 points. Another near turnover there. Appleby couldn't quite get his hands on it. Shot clock down to two. Oquindo shoots an air ball. The Georgia offense has completely stalled out. Much to the delight of the defense of the Demon Deacons here. Holding a seven-point lead in Lawrence Jones for Veteran Memorial Coliseum here on Veterans Day. <laughs> here. It is a homecoming game, and Winston-Salem product getting out in the transition, putting people in the spin cycle, knocking down the difficult three from the corner, and then attacking in transition. David Williamson off to a great start here tonight. Yeah, he's uh, well on his way to challenging his career high, which came actually on senior night last spring when he put 28 on North Carolina State. He is back now for his graduate year out of Winston-Salem Prep. He had himself, as you mentioned, Corey, a good opening night with the 14 points, and, and they need that sort of production out of him this year. They really do, and right now, Doug, you know exactly what he's thinking. I got it rolling. Why am I sitting here on this bench? Coach Forbes, it's time for me to go back. See, that's the thing. When you got it rolling, you need to stay in the game. And when you don't have it rolling, you got to stay in the game to get it going. Exactly. Appleby with the air ball. And it goes back over to Georgia. Bobby Clintman has come into the ball game. He's the four-star freshman from Sweden for the Deeks, who they are very high. A couple of true freshmen, also with Zach Keller, who they think both have high ceilings in this program. And a lot of international flavor to this Wake Forest team. When you think about it, many of the guys up front are from Europe. Swish, Justin Hill gets the Bulldogs back on the board after going five and a half minutes between field goals. Welcome sight. Justin Hill to knock down the three. Mike White happy to see the basketball go through the hoop. He knows there is not a lid on it. Uh-oh. Banking in. Bobby Clintman is now two for three on the year. So he's shooting 67%. He doesn't have to talk about that he banked that in. I'm about to say, I'm taking it off. <laughs> I know the score official scorekeeper won't, but not from the top of the key. We're not going with that. He's got to make a clean one now to make me a believer. Seven to shoot. Rebound by Cameron Hildith, who brings it up. Turns it back over to the Dogs. Now Williamson comes back in. How quickly does he get a shot off? Oh, I mean, I, I'm thinking the first possession has got to be run for you, right? Maybe we give him one to warm back up a little bit. But second possession, we got to go to my man, David. All right. Keep an eye on number four in white. He'll know. Another rebound for Cam okay, Hildren. See, one right here, one right here. Mm. Oh, he's got the big, he had the mismatch. I like the way David is playing team basketball, Dougie Press. I'll be looking for one here. Deeks turn it over. Nice use of the body by Jackson Edder. Good look and a slam by Bradford. But I love the play by Clinton getting into the painted area. The interior passing, dropping it off. That was all set up, one big fella to another, but the big fella putting it on the floor and making plays off the bounce. And when you say big fella, the former Kansas State Wildcat, seven feet, 270 pounds. Would so, you take that charge? <laughs> First off, I don't take charges <laughs> from guys smaller than me, so I'm not taking a charge, but think, look at this. That is big on big action right there, and you see the finish. And again, when the basket comes down that far after uh -huh. a dunk, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of power behind that. But you're right. Bobby Clintman, a 6'9 freshman with the drive and dish. Nine minutes remaining first half here at the Joel. There's our guy, Williamson. Nothing with that. Get my man the ball. That's what I'm talking about. I like it. Tyree Appleby recognizing the hot guy on the court right now. Appleby does a great job getting downhill and finding David in the corner for the easy three. That was much easier than the other. 
Bridges getting more run tonight than Anselm so far. He turns it over. Here comes Williamson again. That's the run. basket. Goaltending against Oquindo. It's a 10-point lead. And we talked with Mike White earlier about the turnovers. And he said, I don't want to bog my guys down and have them thinking about it while they're playing. We've handled the basketball well in our scrimmages. But we can't do that here tonight. If we turn it over against Wake Forest, we'll get beat by 20. Yeah. And right now, turnovers have been an issue and have led to a 12-point Wake Forest lead so far. And I correct myself. It's now a 12-point lead. Don't worry about it. Syracuse math. Don't That's worry all about right. It. We're not going to hold it against you. That's all right. <laughs> Well, since that Justin Hill three, Corey, Wake has gone off on another 7-0 run. Another empty trip for the Bulldogs. Right now, you might want to pick David Williamson up early. Appleby keeps the dribble, wraps it around his head, but then the ball's knocked out of bounds. Bradford had a much smaller man on him. He put the ball down, and it got knocked out of bounds by Edder. But we talked about how much these games mean to Davian Williamson. You can tell it means a lot to Tyree Appleby as well. Playing against Mike White, his former coach, and coaches, other coaches on their staff, and you see he's got a little extra juice early in this. I like the sauce on that play. I wish he'd been able to get his teammate to finish. Here's Williamson, who leads all scores with 15 points. And still running offense. Got to respect it, Dougie Fresh. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Offensive foul against Clinton. And there is Jackson Edder, the senior from Woodstock, Georgia, throwing his body in there again. The backcourt for the Demon Deacons has been exceptional early. Tyree Appleby with a nice find to the hot man, David Williamson. Three ball, corner pop. A year ago, the narrative around many parts of college basketball that it was a down year in the ACC. Only five teams made it to the NCAA tournament, even though three of those five made it to the Elite Eight, two made it to the Final Four. Wake Forest was on the outside looking in, and, and the numbers, and I don't, you've mentioned, I'm a Syracuse guy, the numbers are beyond me. <laughs> but the reality is the ACC needs to win more games like this one in November and December, where they are beating other power conference opponents. Agreed wholeheartedly, but this Wake Forest team should have been an NCAA tournament last year. They went on the road, got a win at Virginia. They beat North Carolina, a runner-up, national championship runner-up, on this court last year and beat them convincingly. And they did not get quadrant one wins for either of those. If you get quad one wins for those, they're in the tournament. And so that's the thing, you know, a lot of that happens because the ACC teams last year, many of them young and with a lot of new faces, struggle in November. And so when you struggle in November, it was held against them in March, even though all those teams, for the most part, got better as the season goes along. And that's one of the things that the ACC does for you because it's such a great conference. It's iron sharpens iron. Teams get better because you play against so many different styles throughout the season. Williamson has had the hot hand, a rare miss for him. Long rebound comes to the Bulldogs and Terry Roberts. I like the other Syracuse guys quote about the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Talking about Coach Beheim. Uh, that's my guy. He had uh, some pointed words, as Coach Beheim has been known to do, uh, mainly about the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, we don't need a repeater. No. Nope. People who uh, want to know at home, they can look them up themselves. Yep. That's why my guy, Coach Beheim, puts it on record. <laughs> now, he's not getting fired. You and I could be dismissed. Exactly. Right now, Mike White trying to figure out how they can score, where they can get points from against this Wake Forest defense. And again, give Wake Forest D a lot of credit because that's a tough shot. You know, and when you force teams to have to make tough shots against your defense, Coach Forbes will live with that. Well, Terry Roberts can score. First team all NBC a year ago at Bradley. He left Peoria to move to Athens. The final jam by Bradford. So you're not taking a charge on that? Uh, no, no charges. But I, what I do like is the fact that Bradford follows that up. But for Georgia, someone has to go in. If the shot blocker goes to go get the shot, someone has to get in there to take the big guy off the glass and help the helper on that possession. Long rebound to Appleby. He's still looking for his first field goal tonight. There it comes on the drive. He was just waiting for you to say that. 
And right now, Mike White not happy. And it wasn't as though transition, they didn't get back defensively. No one just stopped the basketball, allowing Appleby to get to an easy bucket, his first bucket of the day, but to build a lead to 14 for the Demon Deacons. Davian Williamson and the Demon Deacons with the 14-point lead. Corey, what do you think the ceiling is for this Wake Forest team? We showed already last year the huge jump they made. But it's a completely new roster this year. It's a completely new roster, but they've got veteran backcourt players. They've got size up front to compete in the league. They've got shooting. I believe that this is a top hat. And so when you think about that agency with 15 minutes basketball teams, you have to be in that top eight to be in that top half. I think they are a top 18. They will preseason pick ninth, but I've got a lot of trust in Steve Forbes and his coaching abilities. I think this team is a better team than ninth. Good to see Terry Roberts get right back up after the hard fall to the floor. You know, at our advanced age now. You're not even 50 yet. Don't even give me that. Well, you're advanced age then. <laughs> when you see something like that, does it hurt? It just think about, wow, is that, I, I jumped, oh, actually yeah. jumped and felt like that oh, right now. yeah. I mean, to be young and this athletic, such a blessing for these young men. I'm not sure that he, I know at that age, I didn't, I, I definitely took it for granted. Yeah. I'm sure many of them do as well. Yeah. Shot clock running down, and so you got to chuck it up. Another miss by McCry. But that's another great defensive stand by Wade. Williamson finds the cutter, and again, it's the big man who is fouled by Holt. But you see the way Wake is sharing the basketball. As hot as David Williamson has been, he turns down a three, drives it to the basket, and gives it up. Even though he's got it going, he's still looking to make the right play for the team. Here is Bradford, who's got a couple of dunks so far in the ball game. He was originally a four-star recruit out of Melville High School in St. Louis. Opted to go to Manhattan, Kansas to play for the Wildcats. And his freshman year, 62% he made from the floor, second highest in Kansas State history. No but one should ever shoot that high of a percentage. When you're 7 feet 270? No, I don't care. Shoot threes. <laughs> if you're that hot, keep shooting. Well, he's putting together a nice ball game here tonight on Veterans Day in Winston-Salem. He'll take a break after the free throws. And that's one of the things, you know, Coach Forbes talked to us about. They have three centers that they're going to play. They're going to mix it up and see which one of them is playing the best on that given night. And that's the they've got to get the most minutes. But it's a luxury to have three guys that he trusts that he can put out there in that spot. And at the very least, you're giving up 15 fouls out of that position. Yes. Yeah. Shouldn't be anything easy around the basket. Most places don't have three guys where they're going to trust to put a, a put in game. A window has it rim out. Leading score for the Bulldogs coming back from a year ago. And he scored 18 in their opener, still has only two tonight for the dog. But that's a byproduct of when a team is guarding well, because even when the opponent's best scores get easy looks, they're thinking about the defense and where it's coming from. But oftentimes, they don't get those looks to go down. And right now, Wake doing a great job defending, not just with everything they're doing on the offensive end of the floor, defending very well, which is starting to creep into the minds of the Bulldogs. Corey, here's one of the bigs you're talking about, 6'10", freshman Zach Keller from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. He was a four-star recruit, one of those guys Coach Forbes is comfortable throwing out there. Yeah, and Coach Forbes talked to us about making sure that he got his young guys minutes early in the season to get their confidence going, but also to make sure they know they're a part of this and they're going to be needed as the season goes along. Bulldogs turn it over again on the steal, Keller. And Keller on the other end, missed the layup. Able to get it back. Andrew Carr misfired on the three. But see, important right now, even though Keller misses the layup, for Coach Forbes to keep him in the game, let him keep playing. Don't take him out for that mistake, because that's how players lose confidence. And right now, you keep him in the game, give him, let him get a couple more reps on the floor, 
Hopefully he gets another opportunity and gets it to go down. Kyron Lindsay with five points. He was held scoreless in 21 minutes in the opener against Western Carolina. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Nice ball fake by Appleby, and he connects. I can tell you right now, Dougie Fresh, nothing feels better for Tyree Appleby than to make that shot in front of, <laughs> in front of Mike White. Now remember, he airballed a three earlier in the game, so it was good for him to see that one go down. He's got seven points. Williamson leads all scores for Wake with 15 points. Off the hands of Adik. The last to touch was Monsanto, and so the Bulldogs will have it when we come back. And when we come back, we will have a salute to the veterans here on Veterans. Let most respect for Mr. Lawrence Joel, everything that he did for our country, and especially as a black man representing the United States of America. Learned a lot about him actually in the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. I didn't really, until then, honestly, I didn't know that he was black. And it was, I was interested to see that. And it, I played in this building, knew it was named, never knew the history of it yep. until then. You know, tremendous amount of respect. Well, Mr. Joel was the first living black man to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor and the first soldier from Winston-Salem, so honored. Very cool stuff. 34-19 with Corey Alexander. I'm Doug Sherman. It's been all Demon Deacons. Georgia led briefly from uh, an 8-7 score, but since that time, it's been all Deeks. We talked about Tyree Appleby and his scoring. The young man came into the season with over 500 assists in his career, so we got to talk about his passing as well. Bradford's block gets Williamson at the other end. Had it knocked away. Here comes Georgia back the other way. And Bridges came off the bench in the pivot for Georgia, but has gotten the majority of playing time in place of Frank Anselm. You see the putback by Holt, and that's kind of the way Mike White told us today he's going to go about the five position for the Bulldogs this year. We'll take a break with timeout on the floor. Wake up 13. College basketball season. We're so glad you're with us here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The ACC leading the SEC at the moment, 34-21. Wake Forest in Georgia, they decided, hey, let's get together, play a power conference game, and test ourselves before we really jump into the deep end of the pool. I think that was the theme from both coaches, to see what they have, as we see Georgia coming out in a zone defensively, stretching it, but Tyree Appleby continues to get inside the paint area. Late to get out was Frank Anselm, and the Demon Deacons made him pay. Well, Andrew Carr, the junior from Westchester, PA, he might be 6'10", but he can shoot that shot. I don't like Damian Williamson rolling around on the floor like that. Glad to see him up. With the nice find, as you mentioned it, Anselm late to get out there to cover Carr. Carr is capable, a very capable three-point shooter. Actually led Delaware three-point shooting last season as a big. He was ninth in the country last year in two-pointer overall field goal percentage, 56 percent. And as you said, very proficient from beyond the line as well. Made the uh, CAA All-Tournament team, helping the Blue Hens reach last year's NCAA tournament. That's another theme with both of these coaches, with the transfers who they've brought on. They want to get guys who have been in winning programs and been to the NCAA tournament. Well, and that helps throughout the locker room, because if you've got guys who've been there before, that helps guys who are young and also guys who have not because they understand what's necessary, what it takes to be able to win at a level to make it. Ooh -hoo. That's the second time Bradford's really gotten off the ground to contest. This time, though, he picks up the foul. And I tell you what, it was a lot of basketball up top. I'm not sure if there was body underneath, but that looks like a very good block from that angle. As though Bradford got a lot of basketball. Mike White likes to call it. He sure does. Nine new Bulldogs, six transfers, three freshmen. 
roles still being defined, and that's the case even if you have everybody coming back, because every year the team is different regardless of whether the roster is the same or not. I mean, people grow, players grow, teams change. And I think that's the case, really, when you look at the, I mean, we, we call it Power Five, but that's not really it in basketball. But when you look at the major conference schools, because they are bringing in so many transfers, because there are so many new faces, in comparison to many of the mid-majors and, and low-majors who have their lineups returning, they're playing better basketball in November. And so the power conference schools all the time take some lumps early, but as they get to play more games and develop that chemistry, that's why those teams get better as the season goes along. Great defense by Hildreth to cut off the baseline. Ball goes out of bounds, back over to the Demon Deacons. Final minute 10 of the first half here at the Joel. Appleby almost lost it off his hip, still with the dribble. Nice look inside. And the layup made by Bobby Clintman. We've seen a lot of very good passing from the bigs from Wake. The interior passing, getting in the paint, the air, sharing the basketball between the two big guys. And another high-low situation that they take advantage of. And that was Andrew Carr with the assist. Just walling up Clintman with a block shot. Hildred with the Euro step. Hayes from England, why not? The sophomore from Worthing, England, makes it a 20-point ball game. Seconds, one second. Foul at the buzzer. That'll send Georgia to the free throw line in the person of Kyron Lindsay. Cameron Hilders getting out in transition. The Euro to the opposite side. That's a move you work on in your skill sessions, Dougie Fresh. That you might be able to still do that one. Well, at least no. against a cone. <laughs> not against not, a, not in real action, but that's one you work on. In your skill sessions against the cone, this, that, and other, Hildreth bringing it out into the game. Well, Hildreth playing a bigger role this year. Had a career-high 14 points in the opener against Fairfield. Having a good first half here, as are the Deeks. They will head to the locker room with a 19-point lead. Strong performance for Wake Forest early defensively. Turning those turnovers into points on the other end. Georgia with 10 turnovers leading to 12 points for the three over Fairfield. Meanwhile, Georgia turned it over 21 times in their opener. And that trend, unfortunately for the dogs, is continuing here tonight. Yeah, those 10 turnovers have already led to 12 points for Wake Forest. And getting out in transition, got Wake Forest going early. Opened up the basket for them to start making shots. And they did that at a higher clip. Good step through by Tyree Appleby. And taking advantage of the switch. Mike White switching defensively right now, so that puts a lot of onus on guys to be able to make individual plays. That time, Tyree Appleby getting the job done. Terry Roberts on the spin move. He is called for the offensive foul. Well, back home in New York City, Terry Roberts is known as Mr. 40. Playing at Dykeman Park. On West 204th Street in Manhattan, Lincoln Park in Queens, Gersh Park in Brooklyn, and his hometown Mack Park in Suffolk County, Long Island, and Amityville. Apparently, he would, would would go for 40 so easily. He's Mr. 40. Oh yeah, yeah. I like it. I figured you'd like that. Well, you know, anybody can get 40. I'm a fan. Oh, nice find. Car tees it up. I tell you, I am impressed with Appleby's playmaking right now. I know he can score the basketball, but he is diamond out here tonight. Still not as good as his sister, Shekinah. No, this is true. That's a nice bucket right there, and a needed bucket. Another three, only the third three-point field goal made for Georgia. This first points scored by the North Texas transfer, Ardres McBride, helped Conference USA to the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago. Boy, that man carves out space. Davian 
Bradford now with seven points. Let's just say the Davians have been good. One's a O, one is an A N. Still both Davian. And there is a difference between it. We gotta, I gotta be more careful. It's Davian Williamson and Davion Bradford. Oh, yeah, see? yeah, yeah. Okay. But Davion coming up with those seven points. You just fooled me on something. But look at the find. That is a beautiful pass. You have to make that three. <laughs> 18 points for Williamson off the sweet dish. Cross court into the corner by Appleby. And that's the fifth assist by Appleby right now. He's working on a double-double. But right now, Wake Forest seems to be very comfortable with the basketball in the hands of Appleby. And you see the movement away from the ball and the recognition, the nice hook pass over the top. Williamson gives the basketball up, relocates to the corner. Alfie knows exactly where he's going, waits for him to get there, takes care of business. Again, there are two of the transfers to Wake Forest. Davian Williamson, same spot, has been here while Appleby is new this year. Braylon Bridges lost the dribble. I'll tell you what, Steve Forbes has done a great job. Look at another find. But Steve Forbes has done a great job of going out and getting transfers that fit into what it is that they're trying to accomplish. You go back and you look at Alonis Williams a year ago, ACC player of the year, along with Jake LaRavia, who ends up being a first-round pick in the NBA draft. And then you look at a guy like Tyree Alfie, who's come into this game in this season, really, when they need their point guard, he has stepped in and taken over that leadership role. Hill kicks to the corner, the draw and drive. Better help defense to come over and block the shot. And a traveling violation as Bradford went to the floor and secured the basketball. And again, we talked about Apple, but we did talk about Bradford. Bradford has been spectacular here, not only on the offensive end of the floor, but defensively as well, continuing to contest, block, and re add resistance at the rim. Well, Bradford at Kansas State last year, his season was slowed down by a bout of COVID. Got himself a fresh start this year here in Winston-Salem. Clean look for Justin Hill, way off the mark. Oh, oh he's got a seal. He's got to get the basketball. Lindsey had Alfie right on his back. He's got to get that one. Bulldogs in another scoring drought. It now reaches two and a half minutes after another brick. It comes an empty trip. But give Lindsey credit. He ran the floor hard. He had a much smaller defender behind him, sealed and got his position in the post, but yet did not get the basketball and didn't get a good opportunity on offense. Steve Forbes, third year head coach, graduate of Southern Arkansas University. Class of 1988, but he's an Iowan. He uh, grew up in Lone Tree, Iowa. And it's been a long road for him to the top of college basketball. He has coached at the JC level, at the mid-major level, got that opportunity to come to wait three years ago, right at the height of the pandemic. Yeah, tough time to take over for Steve Forbes. A tough first year, but... Got some excitement back in this program last year. Yeah, he said that was so important last year because, again, the 2020-2021 season, what are you going to do? He got hired in the spring, didn't meet his team until the summer. So that's kind of a throwaway in a lot of ways. But he thought it was important to win games last year and get energy back in the Joel. Yeah, and again, when you say get hired in the spring, I mean, it was late spring. And again, so he like you mentioned he never met his team until July. And so he talked to him on Zoom, everything necessary, but that's different from being able to be on campus with your guys. And it was a tough year in the first one, but he showed his coaching acumen over the last season. Got a foul on the rebound. After the missed shot by Mardrez McBride. First media timeout of the second half. We'll step away. All Wake Forest so far tonight. Once again, Coach expects him to play a key role for this team this year. Yeah, and when you look at the transfers for Wake Forest, it's four transfers coming in. Three of those transfers are in the starting lineup. 
And so we talked about Steve Forbes and his ability to identify their needs and be able to go out and find those guys. But at the same time, it's one thing to transfer in and be in the rotation. It's something completely different to transfer in and be a starter and a key member early. After the Williamson three, Wake is now six of 17 from beyond the arc. Georgia only four for 21. But Georgia coming out of timeout, a little energy there. You knock down the three, and then you get an opportunity to get out in transition, get to the free throw line. And this is necessary for Georgia right now to try to find a way to build some momentum to see if they can get back into this game. A lot of time remaining, 15 and a half minutes, more than enough time for them to make this a game. Well, Mardrez McBride was a big part of what the uh, Mean Green of North Texas put together the last two years. NCAA tournament two years ago. They won the Conference USA regular season a year ago. And you might remember two years ago, he was part of the upset of Purdue in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. Another one of those winning pieces Mike White wanted to bring to Athens. Yeah, I see that. And Mike White going back to some full court pressure. And this is the Mike White that I got to know and love in Louisiana Tech way back in the day. I actually took a press rush from him in my coaching time. But I remember getting it from him. And that's one of the things I think we might see from Mike White throughout this season is to try to pick up the pressure full court a little more and make the games faster and try to really, you know, throw a couple monkey wrenches in the opponent's arsenal because right now they're playing a bit under man. Boy, that's a terrific looking setup and finish. Lindsay above the rim for two more. And as you see the full court pressure once again, just giving Wake Forest something to think about and trying to see if you can't come up with a turnover. And Steve Forbes not liking what he sees. He calls the timeout on that one as David Williamson is pinned against the baseline. The nice finish by Lindsay over the top. Georgia with some momentum, some energy, forcing the timeout of the Demon Deacons. Mardrez McBride has gotten off to a great start here in the second half. Not one, but two three-pointers. And attacking the paint, they're able to find Lindsey over the top for the dunk. And just like that, a 7-0 run capped off by the Georgia Bulldogs as they try to make this a game and find some energy here on the road. All eight of the points for McBride coming in the second half. He and Kyron Lindsay both have eight to lead the way for Georgia, which is playing without Matthew Alexander Moncrief here tonight. An ankle injury suffered Monday in the win over Western Carolina has him sidelined for the short term. Good answer coming out of the break as Appleby buries the three. That's big. That's what you need from the guy that's going to be your point guard, from your leader, being able to come out when teams Start to make a run on you. Wake Forest hadn't scored, had three turnovers over the last two and a half minutes. That's a big bucket to give Wake a little more breathing room. Well, Applebee can score, as we talked about. He put 37 on Bowling Green his sophomore year at Cleveland State. And just taking advantage of his ability to come off screens. Defender way behind, giving him more than enough space. To catch and shoot in rhythm, knocking down a big three, stretching the lead back to 19. As a sophomore at Cleveland State, second team all conference, average 17.6 assists per game. Then at Florida, spent three years, including the transfer year, and Appleby averaged 11 per game, got his bachelor's degree in African American studies. So he comes into this year with over 1,500 career points. He can get to 2,000. That's a big number. I know you get the extra year, but that's a big number. Is there asterisks? Boy. I mean, I know his sister yeah. will say there is. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if she did it in four. That's true. Another turnover on the inbound. Oh, the official's going to take, okay. Great officiating. He's going to say that's on me. Mike White doesn't like it. Former Ole Miss Rebel. Will help lead. Uh, in his playing days, his school to the NCAA tournament three straight years. Yeah, earlier you called him a guard. Mike White was a point guard. You got to throw the point in there for point guards. We don't like it when you call us just guards. We got the ball in our hands. We got to reference that. I 
work on that. Part. No, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> I know you better. You're not going to do it now because I said something about it. And anyhow, in this day and age, all these definitions that we grew up with are all being blurred. This yeah. positionless basketball. But that we, we played in a day where it was not positionless. We did. McBride knocks down another three. That's 11 points all in the second half, including three three-pointers. I'll tell you what, he is finding a way into the rotation, earning more minutes on the fly here tonight. Contested three by Appleby. Nice job defensively to get the hand up and get out there by Holt. And here's Holt back at the other end. Bad play by Roberts. Left his feet, nowhere to go. Gets bailed out. And an open three from the corner by Jason Holt. And right now, Steve Forbes not liking what he's seeing. A 20-plus point lead now cut to 11. And Georgia starting to heat up from beyond the arc. McBride getting it started, knocking down three threes here in this second half. And Holt getting involved in the action as well. The corner three is good. And the pressure picking up full court. Mike White changed the game when they started. He started getting his guys picking up in the backcourt, going to a 2-2-1 zone pressure just to show Wake Forest a different look. And it's thrown Wake Forest really out of rhythm offensively and been a game changer this far. And I've got to figure Bulldogs fans and, and people like me, observers, wonder if it's so effective, why not do it more often? Why not do it earlier? Why did it take to be down 23 before you went to that? Well, the same thing that I always talk about your alma mater. I know you do. That's why I led you that way. And, you know, and Jim Beheim has told me time and time again, you can't do it the entire game because people scout it. But when you get down and you need some energy to be able to come back into a game, that's when you go to the pressure. If you do it the entire game, it wears your team down also. So right now, Mike White bringing it out at the right time, and it's allowed his team to be able to get back in this game. Foul inside. That'll send Davion Bradford to the line. I bring that up because I've heard you say multiple times on the air while calling Syracuse game. Yeah, and, and that I, same I actually, thing. I asked Coach Beheim about this. Right. You know what I mean? I don't just say it on the air. I actually go to him and say, Coach, your press is so great. Why don't you do it more often? Right. But, you know, Jim Beheim likes to play a much smaller rotation. He doesn't like to play 10 guys. And to be a pressing team, you've got to play a lot of guys because it takes so much energy out of you. So I understand it. But, you know, and, and I go back to, of course, you know, the game that you always remind me of where Syracuse beats Virginia to go to the Final Four in the Elite Eight, and it was the press, Virginia up 18. Is that what it was? I had forgotten. It no, was 18. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I remember that vividly, and every time I see Syracuse go to that press, it's always effective. Cam Hildreth got away with a little push off to get the rebound. They reset. He finds an opening on the wing and buries the three. And a big bucket needed that just to give Wake a little more breathing room. They can feel Georgia starting to walk them down right now. Every bucket for Wake Forest is a bonus at this point. Trying to look inside for Braylon Bridges posting up. The shot fake. Off the front rim, though, for McBride, who has been hot here in the second half. Traveling violation. Justin Hill tried to come to a stop. Didn't do it, though, before passing the ball and track. Lead was 23. Georgia's been trying to make a push, but the Demon Deacons have made a couple of big shots lately. They really have. Tyree Appleby coming out of timeout, knocks down a big three, and then an offensive rebound off a free throw allows Cam Hill just to get open in the corner, knocks down another three. But those are the only two baskets that Wake Forest has made to try to stem the tide. As you mentioned, Georgia cutting a 23-point deficit to 11 at one point, now standing at 14. Here's Hildreth with the basketball being guarded by Hill to Tyree Appleby. Off the hesitation, picks up the dribble, bring it back out front. 
Hildreth pass off the fingertips of Williamson, who's got it. Six to shoot. Williamson's going to have to go. He does. Makes it in. That's all experience from Williamson, knowing the shot clock is going down, but recognizing how much time he has. Roberts answers with a mid-range jumper at the other end. Georgia only shot 30% in this first half, but second half, they've been shooting the basketball much better. You can see them a much more confident offensive team. Hildreth, a lot of dribbling, finds the cutter. No, it's knocked away. Nicely done by Holt defensively. No one stopping the basketball right now. And again, with the offense starts to go bad, oftentimes it affects your defense. Those are the mistakes that you can't make as a team that wants to be a winning team, especially in the ACC or SEC level. On a play like that off a turnover, someone has to stop the basketball, not giving away an easy bucket. 12 Wake Forest turnovers have been turned into 15 points now for the or by the Bulldogs. Appleby spins for two more. I love the way Appleby is understanding the climate of the game, when he needs to be a facilitator, when he needs to be a scorer. Right there, knowing his team needs a bucket, takes it upon his shoulders to go get one. Sister Shekyla would approve. <laughs> Nice looking footwork by Braylon Bridges. He's the more offensive minded five at the disposal of Mike White. You know, but between, you know, Bridges, and then you look on the other side at Bradford. These guys have been special at the five positions today. Both of them giving their teams a lot on the offensive and defensive end of the floor. Another weight turnover. And Roberts will bring it back out. Smart play by Roberts, didn't have numbers. Make sure you get your team a quality look. Inside of nine minutes to go here at the Joel. Under 10 to shoot. Under control, little leaner no by Roberts. Fight for the ball. Demon Deacons with it. Got numbers. He'll drift. Around the rim and out, but he tips it back in. You want to know who's upset about that play? David Williamson. He doesn't get an assist. assist. Yep. Hildreth gave himself an extra rebound down it, though. Uh, see, right there, momentum going your direction. You pull up for three. If you're David Williamson, you have the green light. You've got the ability. And when you don't, it turns out to be a turnover. Your teammate tackles you because he's running down the floor <laughs> and you can't, the big fellas can't stop. If Williamson pulls up and shoots the three, Wade gets a good look. But because he doesn't, his teammate runs him over. It's a turnover giving Georgia the basketball right back. Did he keep his dribble there, though? Doesn't matter. It was close. Should have shot the pull up. Little Marcus Haynes, Curly Neal right there. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm going way back. No. You will not disrespect Curly Neal <laughs> like that. I saw Curly Neal play when I was a kid at Manly Fieldhouse. I saw Curly Neal play as a kid also, and unbelievable. One of the best shows I've ever seen, the Harlem Globetrotters. Yep. <laughs> Another triple for Wake Forest this time. One of the big men, Andrew Carr. Wake Forest has used timely threes to slow down the Georgia run. Offensive foul on Robert. And that's the second time Appleby has made that play, and Georgia has aided it by extending that forearm. Tyree Appleby doing a great job getting over, cutting off the offensive player, absorbing the contact. And on the other end of the floor, it's been timely threes to keep weight in the lead. 63, Georgia 46, Bulldogs with all sorts of new faces for first-year head coach Mike White, including Justin Hill, who growing up in Houston, it was predestined pretty much that he was going to be a good college basketball player. His dad, Keith Hill, helped lead New Mexico State to the 1990 NCAA. Hold Hill 
was the 1988 ACC Player of the Year at Virginia and a member of the 50th anniversary team in ACC history on the dunk by Bradford. Mom was a two-time All-American for the Hoos. I knew that name. And when I saw the picture, I knew exactly where that game was played, University Hall. I know the name, remember it very well. I looked at my partner and your jaw was down. Oh yeah. That doesn't happen very often. Well again, I'm th when you see Hill, yeah. I don't know, but Holt, the bet I know. Donna Holt, one I of the all-time greats in ACC history, and her son, after transferring from a school in your neck of the woods, Longwood University, he was very good for the Lancers. And now in his first year with Georgia. Bradford putting together a really nice game. But Bradford coming up Gimpy, limping back down the floor on that possession, can't get back and defend the rim. And asking for a sub now. Steve Forbes turned his back. I don't want to see that. <laughs> but you see Bradford limping back down the floor. Going to check out for a second. They get checked out. But he has made his presence felt in this game. 11 points, 5 for 5 from the field, perfect from the field. At the line here is the aforementioned Justin Hill out of Fort Ben Travis High School in Houston. Pick George over Oklahoma State, West Virginia, Vanderbilt, Oklahoma when he was looking to transfer from Longwood. Do you know who came in, by the way? I, I can't let it go. Do you know who came in? Tyree. Tyree. Tyree made me let it go. I was in a thought right there, but Tyree took me out of my thought. Now, does that qualify as a little jelly? Uh, the jelly is the finish. That's just saucy. That's spicy <laughs> right there. I like it. 16 for Tyree Appleby. So the thought that I was in, do you know who replaced Donna Hall at the University of Virginia? Don Stanley, the greatest point guard to ever play at the University of Virginia. She, she had an unbelievable handle. She was one of the first female basketball players I remember watching and just being in awe. She is the first and only female basketball player that I've ever played against and watched who did stuff like this mm. and more importantly, did stuff that I said, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Of course, Dawn has put together a powerhouse at the University of South Carolina. So will she end up going into the Hall of Fame again? Yes. Is that how that works? Yes. Because she's a Hall of Fame coach. She's already in as a Hall of Fame player. Yes. So she will be in a, as a Hall of Fame coach. That's another beautiful fun. I am a Tyree Appleby fan. This is the first live game I've been able to call. I've seen him play before, but I can tell you right now, the way he's moving the basketball and helping his teammates, I like what I see. Steve Forbes got one here. You think Mike White wishes he was still on his side tonight? I do believe he would much prefer him to be wearing the red uniform in comparison to the white here tonight. Tyree Appleby's not the biggest guy. 6'1", only 165. But he has put together some kind of performance. And this backcourt for Wake Forest, I mean, we've got some good backcourts in the ACC. At Carolina, at Miami, this could be a pretty formidable backcourt at Wake. I believe it is. And the thing about it, it's a veteran backcourt. You're talking, look at Tyree Alby with a smile. The fans love him. Only in his second game here, the fans love him already. And look at the game he's put together. 16 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. And an efficient six for nine from the field. But it, and again, he should have more than six and six. And he told you this afternoon as Oquindo buries the three, he had the upper hand over his former coach, and it's played out that way. He was confident with this answer. He's a confident young man, had time to spend with him at the chance to spend time with him at ACC Media Day. And I think he's going to be great here for the Demon Deacons this season. And turns it over. Roberts, dangerous pass. Gets away with it. Williamson nearly took it away. Foul on Hildreth. Sending Edder to the floor. You know what I like also about this Wake Forest team? And Steve Forbes told us this earlier today. He's going to have to play more guys 
As we see the foul right there, I believe Hildreth gets that foul. But he's going to play more guys this year. They're going to have a much larger rotation, and he has more guys to be able to play. Chance for three for Jackson Etter. And Etter, who just drove the ball to the basket and got fouled, does a great job there on underneath out of bounds with a nice cut. Well, he, and the fine to be able to finish on the bucket, an opportunity for the hand one. You talk about people playing different roles for Mike White this year than they did for Tom Green a year ago. Etter started 22 games last year for the Bulldogs. And at the end of the bench now, but in the rotation, I should say at the end of the rotation, young man out of Etowah High School, Georgia native who stayed home to play his college ball. Well, just a moment ago, Davion Bradford with one of the staff members for Wake ran to the tunnel at the end of the arena, but he has since come back and now he's getting onto the stationary bike. We've seen him limping around a couple of times. Personal foul called on Lucas Taylor, not popular here at the Joel. Not popular at all. And again, and that really shows you the way the game has changed. You know, back in the Stone Ages when you and I were playing basketball, if you got out and it was one person offensively with two guys back, mm -hmm. that is not a good shot. No. But this ends up being a great opportunity for Quindo as he misses the first free throw. But he attacks the basket, gets the foul, and coaches are okay with that today. Because, again, you would much prefer to take your chances in transition with your guy with the full of steam going to the basket. I could have probably got up another... 200, 300 field goal attempts during my college career if I could have done that. Well, I do appreciate. Here's the uh, Georgia pressure again, this time handled by Wake. You're talking about our playing days as though I was somehow in your orbit. Well, But no. I'll tell you what, my high school coach at Jordan Elbridge High School, Bill the King Solomon, he'd have been yelling at me if I tried to go one on two for sure. I saw I saw you in you know your Syracuse uniform at the pickup game that you guys that's played true. at the Dome. That's true. So that's why I said our. I've also seen your photos of you, you know, Doing your rep with the Larry Bird at the Boston Garden, so I'll, 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 I'll give you credit. You got a good memory. And I'll keep reminding you, keep sending you the pictures. Yeah, yeah we got to remind the viewers this is an 11-point game now. I mean, this is Georgia has fought their way back, and they've gotten to this point before an 11-0 run over the last 3-10. And again, they've done this before, but then they had turnovers and kind of hurting themselves. Take away opportunities. We'll see if they can continue to extend that run. Get some stops. Lucas Taylor getting some run. Bounces it off. Nice cut by Bobby Clinton who gets the two. And another one of those great interior passes that we've seen from Wake Forest in this game. And I'm pretty certain we will see Tyree Appleby back in the game after this next timeout. We'll finish it off. Oh, Quindo trying to heat up after a relatively quiet night so far. Williamson keeps the dribble. And smartly, Cameron Hilden says, let's work a little clock. Five to shoot, Hildreth missed the rim. Here is Justin Hill. Another time, no one stops the basketball. That is unheard of. In college basketball, you can't allow a guy to get a defensive rebound, go all the way down the floor and lay it in. And now Georgia with the chance to get it into single digits. Looks pretty comfortable in his first year as a Demon Deacon. And the former Mike White point guard getting the job done. Here for the Demon Deacons tonight. Four or five from the field in the second half. Timely buckets, three assists, and most importantly, the nicest move of the night. The spin, the crossover, the finish, the look to the bench. And still a 10-point lead, but Apple will be back into the game right now. As Georgia has an opportunity to make this a nine-point game at the free throw line. Two minutes remaining, more than enough time for Georgia to come back. Justin Hill at the free throw line. And 
Corey, this is the first time since 9.31 of the first half that it was a single-digit deficit. And Wake Forest has been in control the entire game, but give Mike White a lot of credit and his guys for sticking to the game plan. And once they started with the full-court pressure, it was a game-changer. Wake Forest has made timely baskets, and they need one here. Good pressure by the Bulldogs. Better hustle by Appleby. Boy, look for a second. Like Georgia was going to take that basketball away. And, and that's just want to. That's will. I mean, again, you know, there was Tyree out because of easily not sprinted down to get that basketball and it had been a turnover. But because of his effort, Wake Forest gets the foul and keeps the basketball. Appleby looking like he paid the price a little bit for it. Gimpy coming back down the floor. But they keep possession solely because of Tyree Appleby's hustle. Appleby blocked out of bounds. Last to touch, they say, was Georgia. Hassan Holt with the rejection. You want to see this at the end? It almost looked like the basketball went off of Appleby. And the officials are going to go over and look at that because we didn't get a good view of it on that angle, but in live action, I kind of felt like that basketball, when it came down to the floor, hit Appleby on the way out. And that was why I said the officials said it went out on Appleby, because I wasn't <laughs> sure either. Well, it's a 15-2 Georgia run to make things in interesting here at uh, Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem. Let's take another look, see if we can tell better on this angle. So as you see Appleby go to the ground, the shot is blocked, but who does it hit last? Mm. That looks like it's Tyree Appleby's foot, does it not? But is it definitive? Yeah, I would say I think it does, well, I but think I don't. It, I think it has to be definitive if we can see that angle again, because I don't think there's anyone else's foot or anyone else in that area. Did it change direction? Did it change rotation? It did change rotation. So as you see, when he goes to the ground, and you'll see his left foot still somewhat in the air, but as the ball goes down right there, it changes direction when it hits the ground, but it hits his hand last also on the way down. I think there's enough right there to be able to overturn that, and that basketball goes back to Georgia with a key review here in, you know, three seconds on time because under, I mean, over two minutes, you're not able to go back and look at that. Right. So that, so that happens yeah. at 157 remaining on the clock. And the officials have now the opportunity to be able to go back and see for certain. The call will stand on that one. It will stay with Appleby. So it doesn't, I guess they didn't have enough defensive information. From our angles, it looked like that hit Appleby last, though. And we both felt live that it hit Appleby last. Yes. And I'm not dissuaded from that, but I'm not sure that there was definitive no, video. Yeah, yeah. and our, our officials have done a great job this evening. Offensive foul on the inbounds pass. Not sure which of the deeks they got. And that's a play right there where you, you get a break and then you give it right back. And if you're Georgia right now, this is a time where you've got to take advantage of this opportunity to try to cut more into this league. That was foul number three on Bradford. Now we've got one going the other way. Turnovers have been the story. And here at crutch time, you've got both teams giving the basketball away. when they need to get quality looks and find a way to continue to put points on the board. Two defenders come at Appleby, gets rid of the basketball. Under a minute 45 now. Hildreth back to Appleby. Nicely done by the Deeks. Killing time and forcing the foul against Justin Hill after having worked the clock and worked the basketball very nicely. And this is the benefit, if you're Steve Forbes, of your transfers, the guy that, guys that you bring into the program new, being older. 
They've been through it before. We've talked about Appleby, his time at Cleveland State at Florida. We've talked about Carr, his time at Delaware. These guys have been on the floor in these situations before, so they know how to conduct themselves. And still waiting on the return of Zhao Ituka, last year's MAC Rookie of the Year at Marist, who Coach Forbes says is going to be a key member of that backboard when he is healthy once again. He's got knee trouble. Recently had a PRP injection, but they are uh, hopeful that he'll be back in the Deeks lineup before long. You know, it's first week of the season, first time I've been able to see Wake Forest live, and I like what I see from the Demon Deacon. Yeah. You know, I know, of course, Coach Forbes isn't going to necessarily be the happiest about the way this game has ended and how they're allowing Georgia to get back into it. But from what I've seen from Wake Forest, I... I think they got a shot this year. I mean, you've got some older players, you've got some veteran guys, and you've got some young talent mixed in together. And a great coach. I mean, you know, one thing about Steve Forbes, he knows what he's doing on that side of the floor. Appleby's got a nice stroke at the line. Six for six in the opening game against Fairfield. Calmly sinks his first one here. Caught iron, but we'll still count it. Two for two. Oh, those count. The ones off the glass, those are <laughs> Timeout, Georgia. Well, we talked about that uh, for both of these teams, one from the SEC, one from the ACC, this is a first week test where you're playing another power conference opponent to give you an idea of maybe where your team is now. And for Wake Forest, they won't play another power conference team until November 29th at Wisconsin. Well, when you look at what Steve Forbes dealt with a year ago, the fact that they did not have a strong non-conference schedule was held against them when it came to NCAA tournament selection Sunday. And so Steve Forbes went out and changed it. They're playing more power conference schools in the non-conference this year. But, you know, in the ACC now, we're playing 20, 20 games. Yeah. Conference play is on you early December. It's here before you know it. Yeah, their first game in conference at Clemson, December 2nd. That's after the ACC Big Ten Challenge up in Madison against the Badgers. But then they've got a non-conference game Saturday, December 10th against LSU. Then a non-conference game at Rutgers. That'll be a good test as well. And I believe Wake is in a, aren't they in a uh, in-season tournament? Don't they go to Jamaica or Bahamas? I, th I thought Coach Forbes mentioned somewhere that they would be traveling. Maybe he's just going to take a vacation. You know what? That's always great to do right in the middle of the season, especially in <laughs> November. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and I will be vacationing of sorts out in Portland, Oregon, coming up later this month during the uh, Thanksgiving holiday for PK-85. Both very much looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, Wake Forest will go to Montego Bay, Jamaica. They'll play LaSalle, and then they'll play the winner of Georgetown, Loyola Marymount, out there. So Georgetown, if they get that one, and LaSalle. I, I count the A-10 as a power conference. Uh-oh. Terry Roberts for three. Yeah, can Fran Dunphy turn around his alma mater, the Explorers? Foul in the backcourt. Goes against McBride. You know, if Georgia does not win this game, and again, eight point lead, 113 remaining, we still have to say if crazy things can happen. But Mike White has to be impressed with the effort and the way that his team has approached this second half. You know, down big at halftime, a 19 point lead for the Demon Deacons coming out of the half. And then the lead ballooning to 23 at one point before Georgia really starts to fight back. The full court pressure was something that Mike White used, and I think it helped his team tonight to find some energy and get some things going offensively. And I'm sure that's something that we will see much more from them as this season goes along. Remember, he's in year one at Georgia. Still trying to establish a culture from a team that was 1-17 in conference play a year ago. Hill, tough shot, doesn't get the roll, and a foul on the floor. 
Yeah, the folks here at the Joel start to sense that uh, with one minute on the clock, double figure lead. I don't think they've completely started to celebrate, but you could sense after that last foul call that the Deeks are feeling pretty good. The, the, the fans are feeling pretty good. I believe they should be right now. And you know, how about, you know, Cameron Hildreth finishing the games? Again, doesn't start, but you see them coming off. They move Carr to the five position. And of course, I talk him up. He misses a free throw, but a hustle play to come up with his own offensive rebound. He's very skilled at using his hands and not getting called. <laughs> so basically you're saying that was a foul? <laughs> well, he's had a couple of them. It's not a foul if it's not called. This is very true. You know better than I do. If this you can get true. away with it. Yes, agreed. No, I like what I've seen out of Cameron Hildreth playing a bigger role here tonight. And even though he made the hustle play, he comes up with the basketball, you can see by his body language right now, he's upset he missed that free throw. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> Well, again, uh, his dad, Daniel Hildreth, was a pro basketball player over in their uh, home country of England. And he played for Nick Nurse, the current Toronto Raptors head coach. And because Nick Nurse and Steve Forbes are great friends from decades ago growing up and coming up in Iowa, that was the connection to get Cameron Hildreth here to Winston-Salem. Well, how about the fact that Steve Forbes offered Nick Nurse a job? Nick Nurse turned him down <laughs> to go coach in Europe because he wanted to be a professional coach. And I think it was a great decision by Nick Nurse. Yeah. That was not a great decision to foul the three-point shooter. Oquindo will go to the line to shoot three. And if your car on that possession, use your size. You want to contest the shot, but not lunge toward the shooter at that point, giving them opportunity to put three on the board from the free throw line. a four-point possession a huge turn for Georgia to keep that door ajar this is far from over 35 and a half seconds at eight-point game it is far from over and right now I mean and again if you're Steve Forbes you like what's happened in this game but you're not happy with the way that has ended thus far giving up offensive rebounds on missed free throws turnovers these are the things that cost you games <laughs> Especially as you get into ACC play, playing against a team like Georgia who's going to continue to scrap, you can never take your foot off the gas pedal at a time like this. And we see Wake Forest has done that at times here in the second half. Well, Georgia will have the weekend off before hosting Miami, Ohio on Monday. And then their next games are against Bucknell, St. Joe's, South Florida, or UAB as they play in the Sunshine Slam in Daytona Beach, Florida. Appleby breaks the pressure to Williamson. They've been the story largely for Wake Forest, the backcourt combining for over 40 points. And I believe that's something that, you know, Wake Forest can lean on throughout this season, a veteran backcourt that can score. And we've seen Appleby make some unbelievable passes throughout this game and not only the spectacular passes but the passes where he's pretty much throwing his guys open and leading guys into very good looks Lindsay takes a seat Abdul Rahim back in from Georgia as Williamson with 22 points former East Tennessee State star who was on the 2019 SoCon All Freshman team. Give him 23 to lead all scores. Appleby's got 20. But you know, Apple, you, I'm sorry, Davian had with 16 in the first half? Something like that. So you know what I'm thinking going into the locker room. He didn't shoot enough. 32. I mean, whatever it is in the first half, you should multiply by two. That's what you should end up with. At least. Long two. Is good by McBride. And Georgia is not going away. <laughs> Many of the fans sticking around to make sure 
this becomes a win. You don't want to get in the car and turn on the radio. Mm -mm. Find out you're in overtime and got to run back into the building. Be one of those people in the 88 World Series at Dodger Stadium when Kirk Gibson hit the home run and you see all the brake lights mm -hmm. out beyond the right field fence as they are driving out. Yeah. Like, wait a second. Although in reverse, Dodgers, they thought the game was over. They thought over. it was over. They thought the A's had the game. I never understood the rush to get to the exits. If you're taking the time and paying the money to come to the game, I'm one who wants to stay to the end. I agree wholeheartedly. Some people think they're going to beat the traffic. <laughs> Will be now with 22 points. Does Georgia have one last trick? No, and the shot clock is off. And it looks like the Bulldogs are going to step away and let the Demon Deacons dribble it out. This is a great, not just a good, but a great early season win for Wake Forest, for Steve Forrest, for the culture here in Winston Salem to be able to get a power conference win this early in the year. Will do wonders for his team's confidence as well as building chemistry, knowing that they can win games.